you know, there's a lot of controversy about EMFs and 5G. They're said to be very dangerous to your health. Whether or not it's true, we don't really know. And I think that even if it were to be harmful, there's nothing you can do about it in a way that 5G is already coming out and is kind of cover most of the parts of the world. What you should focus on instead is promoting your resiliency against these sort of things and know what, what you need to do in order to protect yourself against EMF. This video talks about EMF and autophagy. Does autophagy protect against EMF? Okay, nobody panic! The human eye can detect only a narrow range of wavelengths in the electromagnetic spectrum. It's called visible light and contains all the colors of the rainbow. Purple, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. There are many types of energy humans can't see, such as gamma rays, x-rays, far infrared, microwaves and radio waves. However, this doesn't mean that they don't have an effect on your physiology. There are two types of EMFs. Low-level radiation or non-ionizing radiation comes from cell phones, Wi-Fi, MRIs, 5G towers, etc. High-level radiation or ionizing radiation comes from the sun's UV lights and X-ray machines. Naturally, only part of the electromagnetic spectrum humans would get exposed to was visible light from the sun. Cosmic rays are reached only in space and during air travel, whereas radio and microwaves originate from the invention of electricity. Nowadays, we're all pretty much constantly surrounded by EMFs. According to the World Health Organization, Radio frequency EMFs are a possible carcinogen to humans, based on increased risk of breast cancer associated with wireless phone use. Some studies don't see an overall increase in risk of cancer, with exception of only the highest levels of exposure, but more long-term research is definitely needed. Exposure to EMF for years has been found to be linked with leukemia, especially in children. EMF has also been shown to cause neurological problems, sleep problems and nerve functioning problems. In addition to that, higher exposure to EMF during pregnancy increases the chances of the child getting asthma by three times. Mobile phone use reduces sperm motility and viability. A lot of the research that says that EMF is safe is funded by the telecommunications industry and of course they're gonna say that it's safe. I personally think that you probably wouldn't want to be constantly surrounded by EMFs and you definitely don't want to, you know, shoot it into your head constantly all the time. So it may cause some problems if you're constantly surrounded by it. But, at the same time, I also believe that humans can adapt to it, and it's not going to cause that much problems if your body builds up the resiliency to it. And the most part of, important part is to allow your body to recover from this exposure. 5G! Certain electromagnetic frequencies and exposure to radiation cause subliminal stress to all cells of your body. This in turn promotes autophagy a little bit to protect the cells against damage. Autophagy is a defense mechanism against physiological stresses such as starvation, exercise, heat, or concussions. In one study, six mice were exposed to 835 MHz of EMF at a specific absorption rate for 5 hours a day over the course of 12 weeks. These are the frequencies that are used in radio telephone services. The results show that long-term exposure to these frequencies induces hyperactivity, autophagy, and demyelination in the cortical neurons of those mice. Myelin is the insulating sheath around nerves that transmits electrical impulses. Basically, the mice's brains started to break down and the body activated autophagy as to slow down the degeneration and repair the damage. Now, of course, these frequencies are more harmful for rodents and humans probably adapt to it much better. But I think that the main idea is still that it does have an effect on mammalian physiology. Small amounts of EMF and radio frequencies can act as a hormetic stressor to the body and they can kind of increase your resiliency against those things. But if you do it over all the time and if you overexpose yourself, then it definitely can be harmful as well. It's been found that autophagy protects against DNA damage in mice who are exposed to radioactive EMFs. So you can find at least some solace in the fact that your body does a pretty good job in protecting itself against these things thanks to autophagy. There are also other ways autophagy can protect against the other damage that EMF can cause, not just the direct damage to your DNA. Ionizing radiation has been found to accelerate the development of atherosclerosis or plaque formation in mice. This can cause cardiovascular disease, stroke, or other forms of heart failure. Whether or not non-ionizing radiation has the same effect is not clear. However, it doesn't deny the fact that being exposed to EMF, both ionizing and non-ionizing, does create more oxidative stress by increasing intracellular calcium. The increased amount of free radicals also damages the mitochondria and spreads inflammation. Oxidative stress and inflammation play a key role in the development of atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease. 
Autophagy plays a vital role in protecting cells from oxidative stress, reducing apoptosis, and growing lesion stability. Impaired autophagy contributes to arterial aging, and inhibiting autophagy accelerates plaque necrosis. It's been shown that knocking out ATG5, which is a key gene for autophagy regulation in macrophages, can cause the aggravation of atherosclerosis lipid plaques by increasing apoptosis and oxidative stress. So basically, not enough autophagy can lead to the accumulation of plaque in your arteries, whereas sufficient autophagy helps to eliminate it. And it also lowers the oxidative stress that creates these plaques in the first place. Fortunately, autophagy also works in your brain, and it protects the brain against oxidative stress. Poor sleep, jet lag, shift work, and even EMF exposure are mild forms of traumatic brain injury, or TBI. It's been shown that the brain activates autophagy in response to TBI as to deal with the stress and start healing the damage. Ketone bodies and ketogenic diets are also now being used to treat brain injuries and concussions. Neurological stress, like sleep deprivation or EMF, are a form of TBI that leads to mild autophagy in the brain. Autophagy is activated in response to concussions and TBI because that's the least your body can do to cope with it. You need to clear out the toxic proteins and aggregates that accumulate there via this thing called agrophagy, which is a subcategory of autophagy. Banging your head against the wall or shooting EMF up your ears isn't probably a good idea, even if it does activate autophagy, so you shouldn't do it. But just, just know that things like ketosis and autophagy helps with the healing process, and it kind of protects it against it as well. So I would even say that if you were to be exposed to EMF in a faster state, then your body would be more resilient against it, thanks to having higher rates of basal autophagy and kind of mitigating the oxidative stress in real time, whereas if you were to be exposed to the same amount of stress without having autophagy activated. Fasting has already been shown to improve the effectiveness of chemotherapy in rats as well as humans by protecting against the radiation and killing off more cancer cells. It essentially puts the body into a more robust state where its stress adaptation and resiliency are higher. Fasting also protects against the radiation and UV rays while flying high in the air. It's going to reduce the negative effects of traveling across time zones and circadian rhythm mismatches. That's why you shouldn't really eat on an airplane because the food they serve will definitely kick you out of ketosis and autophagy. In conclusion, you probably can't avoid EMF for the rest of your life because it's impossible to do in this modern world. And you don't really have to be that afraid of it either as long as you take care of yourself. Hormesis describes a biophysic response to a toxin or stressor that ultimately makes the organism stronger. That's how exercise, fasting, sauna, coffee and a cold also work. Hypothetically, EMF exposure is a hormetic response that should increase your body's resiliency against it in the future. You should definitely take some time for being grounded, doing some earthing, but at the same time, you should also try to strengthen your own body's antioxidant defense systems, such as primarily autophagy, glutathione, NRF2 and all those things that would make your body stronger against anything. If you want to know how to optimize autophagy with intermittent fasting, training, sleep and food combining, then check out my Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay protected, stay empowered.